Good morning, everybody. It's Jillian. So, yeah. So today is what? Wednesday? No, today's Thursday. Wow, Thursday. Can you believe it's Thursday? And so, yeah, I feel actually a lot better um, since I took care of my husband on Monday because he was sick and also Tuesday. It took me Wednesday to get over two days of being exposed to a different strain of whatever was going on. Um, it took me a week and seven, or it took me a week or seven days to get over taking care of my dog since November all the way up to February 10th or 11th when she passed away. And so, yeah, it makes sense that it took me seven days to get over that sickness because I was exposed to it and I was taking myself down. My immunity was compromised taking care of her until I made that decision, that fateful decision that Friday. So being exposed to my husband for two days took me a day to just blow my nose and release the demons. And then, yeah, yesterday got over it. Today, it was like last night, like hardly anything. So that's, that's kind of, that's pretty good. So can you imagine if you're taking care of someone on a continuous basis who is sick and you're taking on all of their different microbes because you can't help but do that. Can you imagine if you're not releasing on a daily basis and dealing with whatever uh, predisposed issues you have that how much that's going to compound when your body finally gives out. I mean, that's the thing when you're exposed to people who are sick on a daily basis, how much you're taking on of their demons. And are you releasing those demons or are those demons compounding? And that's, I guess that's the nature of the medical industry. It is a self-fulfilling prophecy. It is when you're in the medical industry, you will take on those demons. And you might last for a certain amount of time, but remember, we just went through climate change. 2019 was when things switched around. So now when you're taking care of sick people and or in the medical system, you are taking on astronomical demons. And they are incubating. And they are metastasizing. And that's why you have so many different diseases. And so when the climate changes, those diseases come out and people get sick. And so it wouldn't surprise me that any kind of foundation of any kind of disease in any area comes from the hospital system, the, the in-home care system, any kind of system where people are constantly having to take care of someone who is dying. Because remember, we don't just say, okay, now that you're, you're, you're suffering, it's time to put you down and cremate you in, a, in an enclosed space and away from the public. No, we take care of sick people who are releasing their demons on a constant basis. Just like my dog. She was releasing so many little demons. If I would have put if I put her down back, you know, two years ago, I wouldn't be in the position, right? No, but I wanted to keep her alive. And then from that from that choice of, of keeping her alive, even though she was releasing so many of those those demons and trying to survive in climate change, I was taking on those demons and they were becoming even more numerous um, around November when she was deteriorating even so much more than I was bottle feeding her. And so, yeah, you know, taking care of dying people in this society, yeah, it is developing a lot of demons. And of course, we're not supposed to end somebody's suffering until the medical system says it's okay to end someone's suffering. And so, yeah, you're, we're going to see demons all over the place because some people are dying and they are releasing their demons. And people are picking up on them and metastasizing them, mutating them, turning them into more exotic diseases. It's a built-in... It's a built-in population control. Because again, when you have climate change, people's insides try to release. Because that's the only way it can try to survive. And when you're releasing demons, somebody in the vicinity will pick it up and will mutate it. And so I know from personal experience, twice, with my dog and with my husband. But with my husband, it was easier to release those demons because I wasn't, he wasn't sick for very long. And he's out of the house. So whatever demons he's releasing is out there. And it'll just kind of get be part of the whole, you know, conglomeration of of the air, food, and water and all that. And so, yeah, last night I was, you know, I, I still wake up in the middle of the night and I have to pee and all that stuff. It's not, it wasn't as urgent last night as it was the night before. But, uh, but I still need something to listen to to go to sleep. And so I was listening to stuff about Jimmy Hoffa <laughs> and... Even I was watching last night on Netflix about Bobby Kennedy and his, his, um, 
his whole activism against the mob and organized crime. And, you know, and, and, <laughs> and I'll tell you, you know, people can even say the mob is like a secret society. Because, yeah, it is. Only a certain people know about it who have been a part of it. And then our government has found a way to infiltrate and break it apart and control it. And so the mob isn't as as active as it was way back in the 1900s. But uh, they figured out, the government figured out, CIA, you know, MI6, MI5, figured out the, the, the intelligence around the mob. And so they also have taken on some of the characteristics and learned how to... <laughs> To, to, to see, you know, corruption and also figure out how to, how to implement corruption and also come out unscathed. And then, of course, there's all that, you know, plausible deniability. There's all, I'll tell you, our government has learned from the people. You know, when you, when you become a, a extremely intelligent, um, extremely intelligent criminal, the government will learn how you're doing your shit. Even the J world, the government's going to learn the J world, how they're going to utilize it for whatever means that they utilize it for. And it could be even reverse psychology. It could be so many other things. It could be stuff in biotech. Okay. The government learns from the people and the people learn from the government and it is a quid pro quo. And sometimes you don't want to know what the government's doing. Sometimes you don't want to know what societies are doing. Sometimes you need to know so you can protect yourself. And so it's the discernment of what you need to know and what you don't really need to know and what you shield your eyes from and how you characterize and then how you also just, you know, put out the truth out there to those that are willing to listen. And if you are willing to listen to somebody else's truth, you can't get mad at the message. And that's really the one of the biggest takeaways the last six years is that people get mad at the messenger, but they choose to listen to the message. They choose to participate in the person's lifestyle, okay? And so when you purposely insert yourself in someone's life and then you get mad at how they live, what the fuck is your problem? You're the one that wanted to know what I was doing or what I was not doing. And then you get mad at it. That's what the crazy thing is. <laughs> and so when you think about 2012 London, London opening ceremonies, way back in 2012, I remember all that. Okay, they were telling us that they were going through the, all the layers of history, all the different evolutions, all the contrived history that was developed so that way they guide a society in a specific way. So when you watch the 2012 Olympics, they're, tell, they're showing you the Industrial Revolution. They're showing you the 1960s sexual revolution, okay, using sex as a, as a way to control people, the oxytocin, all the cults and the religions and, and the Hare Krishna stuff and all that stuff. So they were going through the layers and layers and layers of programming. And it's not surprising it came from London, London, the Church of England, Rosicrucians. That's why I wrote my book about the Rosicrucians because you have to know the world that you live in. They're telling you everything they're fucking doing. But of course, plausible deniability. What do you mean by plausible deniability? Well, there'll be actions, there'll be events, there'll be things that are going on, wars and, and pandemics and train crashes and all this stuff. And or, you know, facilities, food facilities, you know, going through whatever recalls and diseases and all that stuff. And so you'd be like, oh, gosh, it's because of this, because of climate change, which, yes, OK. So we have all these things going on, of course. And, and you could have a list of every single thing out there that people are an activist against. And it's like you can have your belief system on what it is, but the government will always give you an opportunity to believe this Believe this, believe this, and whatever it is you choose to believe, you can't get mad at it because you choose to believe that. So why get mad if you choose to believe? Because I'm telling you, there's another belief out there that you'd be like, oh, it's climate change. There's like a whole pattern in the universe and, and every, you know, 6,000 years it changes. And so, and, and so they're giving you that belief so you can live in that kind of blissful ignorance of that world. But if you choose the conspiracy world, you choose the intentional depopulation world, then that's your choice to believe that you can't get mad. You literally cannot get mad. You can't go and be like, oh, you guys are horrible. No, because they're giving you at least at least 10 different options to choose from. That's the thing with people is when they choose to believe something, they choose to listen to something, they choose to follow someone and they get mad at who it is that they're following, who it is that they're believing or whatever. Because even the conspiracy world, when they believe that it's all intentional, they're like, oh my God, and they're all up in an uproar. But remember, you have the choice to believe something different and live by that.
but you choose to live in that world. So then who do you have to blame? Who do you, who, <laughs> why are you mad if you're choosing to believe something or disbelieve something? Why get mad? That's your choice. You made that choice. And so the whole thing with secret society is they were never fucking secret. They were always operating in plain sight. But remember, you chose to believe this world. Even when somebody told you, well, there's something a little fishy here. Maybe explore this more. But no, they're like, oh, no, I can't believe it. That, that can't happen. Okay. <laughs> Why couldn't it happen? If you, if you have friends that can conspire against another friend and talk smack and say this and say that, what makes you think the government's not going to do the same thing? If you, if, you do, if you actually do that in your own circle of people, people conspire against each other all the fucking time. They organize against each other. They say shit about each other. Uh, it's, it's, not that, it's not that difficult to hide your intentions from somebody based upon your, you know, what, it, what your purpose is. Okay? <laughs> so secret societies, there's nothing fucking secret about them. It's just now that are you willing to explore their game, understand their strategy. And remember, even though you say, oh, yeah, this is what's happening, this is what's happening, there's 10 other fucking beliefs that someone chooses to believe that you can't convert them. And you can, I mean, you can try. But remember, they're living their great life, whatever that is. That's fine. And it, it could be great to them. But remember, when you, when, when, you, when you understand all the truths and you see the outcome, then you also see that maybe the outcome doesn't have to happen. As far as you, yourself, not so much out there because you can't control people out there, but in your world that you don't have to die, you don't have to suffer from cancer disease and chronic illness. When you learn that truth and you see people out there who are just like, oh yeah, I have to suffer from cancer disease. I have to do the oncology. I have to get these operations. You're like, okay. And, and you watch all that happen and, and they're happy with their life or not, or they're hiding behind drugs and alcohol and sex and all that, but they're happy. Fine. Fuck. That's how we have a nice, organized society because we allow those same people, allow everyone, to live their truth that isn't violating man-made law. Even though they may be violating natural law, but that's their choice. We, our life, our human humanity in the last three hundred years is built on dying and reproducing. So there's nothing wrong with that per se. Obviously, it's gotten a little bit out of control <laughs> because of the kind of people that we are producing that are not contributing to society and are also taking society down on so many levels, but that's not for us to go and try to manage. That's for the government to manage. And they are. You got to understand that. That's why they're giving you so many choices to believe stuff. That's what the whole 2012, that was all the 9-11. It then came the project, what is it, Mockingbird? Then came all the different belief systems. Then you have everything come out. Everything. And now you're bombarded with so many different truths, some that you don't even want to know. Some I don't want I don't want to know some of the shit that goes on. Let me tell you, even some of the movies that I watch, I turn the other way. I'll walk out of the room when it becomes really aggressive. Because there's movies that are really, really gory and violent that I don't need to subject myself to. And so when you purposely subject yourself to something that goes against whatever it is that you believe, then you cannot get mad when you purposely subject yourself to someone else's belief that at this point right now, it's not where you're at. Because I'm gonna tell you, if it's, if it's where you're at, you'd be open to it, you wouldn't be mad at the information, you wouldn't be mad at the message. When people are mad at the message, and they're mad at the, at the truth that they decided to believe, or disbelieve, <laughs> well then you need to get mad at yourself. Not the messenger, because they're just another protein out there giving you another dimension, another lifestyle, another belief system, that you could potentially convert yourself to if you wanted to, if you found the value in it. If you don't find value in it, then don't fucking entertain it. And people don't. Can you still respect people out there even though you don't believe in what they believe in? You, Yeah, you could. But remember, people will, will say the only way that they can like someone is if they believe what you believe. But remember, there's a way to interact with people without shoving your lifestyle and belief system down their throat. And it's hard to separate what you say on Facebook and the way you see in the person because they could still be like nice to your face and all that stuff. But when you remember what they say on Facebook, then you're like, oh, God, wow, ah, she thinks this, she thinks that. And so it's hard for people to separate. And that's fine. Because pe people can't handle somebody else's truth. And when you can't handle somebody else's truth, it's not going to matter what you say about the world that you live in. They're not going to care about it or even want to entertain it, which means they will not entertain you. And that is absolutely perfectly fine. 
Because remember, we all want to convert each other. And we like, some people like like-minded people. Because, you know, believe me, I, 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 when I think about hanging out with a bunch of people and, and, the, and the, the main thing is, is drinking alcohol, let's just say that. I'm not a drinker. I'm not a drinker. I like to do destination things. I like to go, you know, go do things, specific things. Enjoy the experience. Yeah, okay. When you have a bunch of people, you got to deal with everyone's wants and needs. And so the one-on-one is what I find the most um, uh, beneficiary, most beneficial, not beneficiary, the most beneficial is the one-on-one, maybe two, maybe three people, but really the smaller groups is what I find that's the, is, is, is the best for me to interact with and derive some kind of benefit or it becomes a party. I'm not really into partying so much when you think about it. And so that, you know, so, so understanding how you operate in the world and what you fit into is also paramount. So that way you don't feel like you need to fit in if that's not your forte. And then you, and then, and you'd be okay with that. And so that's the thing is that when you become more aware of all the different truths out there, you will be on your own on some levels, especially if you're willing to be vocal about it. Some people aren't willing to be vocal about it. They would rather, which I understand, play both sides, and I understand that too. But I think there's also, um, <laughs> there's something to putting something out there. There's something to, to talk about another truth and to be uncomfortable and to suffer a little bit. There's something to that. And, and there's something to wake up other people with another truth if they choose to listen. That when you do speak out there and say things and understand all sides of the story that, yeah, there is this truth, there is this truth, there is this truth, and, and you can live in all these truths. Remember, people expect to die someday. So dying in this society sooner, yeah, it's a little bit jolting, but if they already expect to die someday, then they don't really give a shit about the trained derailments. They don't really give a crap about all the different therapies because they expect to die someday. So it doesn't matter if someone expedites the process, right? If you expect to die someday, then, you know, being all upset about all the things that are going on and the weather and all that stuff, okay, I get it, but remember, you have the opportunity to dodge all the fucking lightning bolts. You have the opportunity to listen to indicators. You have the opportunity, if you set yourself up correctly, to to uh, preserve yourself through this transition. Because remember, I mean, I'm seeing kids right now that are wearing masks, and they're the only ones wearing masks you know, in, in, in a sports, like in a, in a type of sports situation. And I'm like, is this kid going to get some kind of immunity or are they going to just keep shielding their kid from immunity? But I mean, that's the thing is that, <laughs> it, that that's, that's, that's the kind of crazy world that we live in is that people will have the opportunity to do whatever. So I don't know, I'm just going off on, on a tangent, but <sighs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, so yeah, <laughs> I was just, I'm just, my mind is going in so, so fast. So I got to slow down a little bit, but I mean, that's the thing is that we all have, we have different types of truths and people are going to believe whatever they want to believe there. You know, it's, it's going to be whatever it's going to be. If you choose to open your eyes to stuff, then you can't get mad. If people choose to close their eyes to another truth, you can't get mad at them. That's their choice. Um, a lot of ways we do preach to the choir, but that's okay. Um, it's always good to even challenge yourself, even challenge your audience, um, because there is there is definitely you know a growth when you're able to speak out and articulate um, and understand all sides of an issue and be hypocritical because that's what our whole country is founded upon is hypocrisy because we're giving room to everyone's belief system, and so again out there when you believe people should die someday, it's not going to matter what the fuck you know is going on. It's not. When you, don't believe, when you don't believe people should die someday, then you'll find every way to sidestep the intentions and put it out there how you're sidestepping it. And at this point, if you're meant to pass away, you'd be dead by now because it will be an extreme nuclear war in your town that will obliterate everyone. So no one has a chance to redirect. But when you just, you know, when you have little explosions here, like a factory here and a train derailment here and, and a chemtrails over here and and a war over here and, and all that stuff. Okay, yeah, shit's going on. But remember, if you're not dead, then you have a chance to redirect. That's what we have to understand. So nothing is secret. People just choose, which I understand, again, self-preservation. But again, it's up to the parent to help warn their children of what's going on in the society without completely traumatizing them and 
cause them to go that direction, but have them understand the, the world is not what you think. There are a lot of different truths and you divulge each truth slowly as they become mature so they can protect themselves in this fucked up world. Because that's why you're seeing so much human trafficking. These girls don't realize how crazy people are. They don't realize the deception, the catfishing on social media, YouTube. And so when they believe people for face value, I did remember I got catfished by Jessica Ramirez. <laughs> okay, so it can happen to the best of us. Because you want to believe if you're so desperate for some kind of attention or desperate for some kind of validation, desperate for something, and that's the parent's issue and the child's issue with the parents. They lost the communication when a kid is going for a stranger versus talking to their own parents. But even then, you got to make sure the parents are <laughs> they're relatively balanced so they can guide their children correctly. But that's the thing. How much do you divulge your kids at what point in time? Because... It's not like we have different islands where you'd have to take a boat to go over to that place over there. No, we have so much diversity in one town. You could have a really puritanical person over here and a really, uh, you know, aggressive person over here. And if they're really good at hiding their aggression and they come off puritanical, but they're really aggressive, how is that kid going to freaking know? And so a lot of ways you almost have to to be paranoid and you have to want to be really mostly on your own. If you have to be around people, then you will take on many, many demons. And so the whole point of the J world is to learn how to be on your own and take on demons slowly and release them without those demons compromising you. That's the main thing that about the J world is that you be careful what you entertain, what you bring into your house and what you put yourself into out there in the world because the world's a fucking scary place. Okay, you got to think of every single pitfall, every single possibility, and how will you survive it? And right now, some things I just wouldn't put myself in a position to be at somebody else's, you know, mercy when you think about it. And so until, until the frequencies calm down, man, I don't know about, you know, put myself out there, way out there. Um, that's why social media is great. That's why virtual community is great. And you can learn. You don't have to go to a class to learn. I mean, I learned on my own the last six years on, you know, with stuff that I'm looking up based upon my intentions. And so at this point nowadays, it's better to learn and research and do your own learning and do your own type of stuff. And when you teach someone about something, you also learn. Hey, Grace, nice to see you. Thanks. Hey, Audrey, all that, everybody. So, you know, at this point, now is the time to not only release your own demons, right? Because you have the space, you have the delivery services, you have the time, but it's also a time, a period of time where you need to learn and teach your children the crazy ass ways of this world because they are and everything is in plain sight. Everything is. Nothing is hidden. You go on the internet, you can Google anything you want. Not that you want to Google everything, anything you want because some stuff you don't really need to see, but uh but it's, it's sometimes you can know about something without actually having to see what goes on. Believe me, I don't want to know half the shit that goes on out there in the world. Okay? But there are certain things I must know. But even then, do I really want to know it? So it's okay to have secret societies, okay? It's not a bad thing. But if you choose to research and you choose to go and, and find out somebody's truth, whatever it is, you can't get mad at the messenger. So that's why there's warning. That's why it says PG, rated X sex, you know, nudity and, and all this other stuff because it gives the parents warning on what their kids are being exposed to. Is it too early for them to be exposed to that? And also, yeah, you know, adult content on YouTube. I don't go to the dark web. That's that's even the most underground shit that even the FBI, MI6, they all play those parts because they have to. So I don't circulate in all that dark shit, okay? But... uh you can reveal enough truth without traumatizing people. That's why I didn't show you all the pictures of my dog going through her. I showed one person <laughs> and what Sugar was going through. One person. I knew she could handle it. And she could. She's a fucking trooper. But uh, but I wasn't going to traumatize all of you guys with what was going on with my dog. So um, it was bad enough that I was living it. So <laughs> but I'm able to, I was able to get over it. I could handle it. I have a release process. Let me tell you, if I didn't have a release process, I would still be traumatized today. But no, I don't have any guilt over it. I did what I had to do during that time. And I even, like when I get on the bed with my husband, you know, when he came in the bed the other night and he was sleeping before he went to work, we, we, I saw a shadow. So I'm thinking like, oh, did Sugar get on the bed? <laughs> you know? And Jason was just thinking about Sugar too at the same time. 
And so we were both were thinking about sugar and we, you know, so I know she's kind of running around here and, and it's perfectly great. I mean, I'm not really afraid. It's just interesting. Cause sometimes, you know, my scar here, you know, pulsates occasionally. Okay. I got two scars from her. And so I have my own memories of my dog and, and I go through that, but it's nothing like, you know, completely horrible. It's just, it's, it's the world that we live in. It's the reality. It's the truth that I have come to terms with. Okay. And so we all have to deal with the truth in different ways, but when you search out the truth, and then you don't like what you're seeing. Don't fucking get mad at the person or what you purposely searched out because you chose to insert yourself. You chose to search shit out. When you choose to Google something, when you choose to go in and, and tune into someone and then you get mad at their information, that's your fucking fault. Don't get mad at them. And if you do get mad at them, that means you take no personal accountability. And that's why you're suffering. That's why you're on a string of drugs with cancer disease and chronic illness, taking herbal remedies and cannabis, and seeing a therapist because you failed to take fucking personal responsibility. And so that's why the world is a fucked up place right now. Because people fail to take personal responsibility and they get mad at the messenger even though they purposely searched out the message. Purposely des designed their whole life around that person and they get mad at that person. <laughs> that's the activist world. Have a good day. Bye.